Okay, so now we've got it set up to when we view our parent item, we see a list of all the children items, and there's a link here to create a new child item. Uh, what we're going to do is add a script to this page so that when you click on new item, it will bring up the new item form for the child entry, but it will pass in the ID of the parent to that child form using the query string. Okay, and to do that, we're going to use this script right here. And let me walk you through it real quick. Uh, you can see we're referencing the jQuery library using Microsoft's Content Delivery Network. And then when the page is loaded, I need to get the issue ID of my parent. And this is stored in the query string parameter ID. And that's what this little function does here, get parameter by name. It gets the ID from the query string and stores it in issue ID. The next thing we want to do is we want to find this link, this new item link, because we still want to just reuse that. So this part of the script says find the anchor element that has a title attribute equal to add a new item to this list or library. Um, and I know that this is what the anchor element is because when I viewed the DOM, I was able to find this title attribute. So that's how I find that anchor element. And I'm going to store that in a variable. So now I'm going to take that anchor element, I'm going to add an href to that element. And that href is going to call the new item to function, which is the function that SharePoint uses to add a new item. And I'm going to pass to that the URL of my new item form for the child. And then I pass in another query string parameter called issue ID. And we set that equal to issue ID, which is this variable here. So you can see we're calling the new item form for time, and we're passing in a, a query string parameter called issue ID, whose value is the ID of the parent. And then I'm going through and I'm removing the on click event from this attribute because I want to get rid of the old functionality that was there. And that's what this script does. So let's go to back to the list for issues. We're going to go to the list and we need to edit the default form again. So let's go to the default display form. And now we're going to add another web part and it's going to be a content editor web part. So a media and content, content editor, we want to add the web part. This is just like you did in SharePoint 2010 uh, before. So you should be used to this by now if you did this back then. Add the web, oh, add. In fact, it helps if I click the right button. So I click Add. Here's our content editor. We want to edit the web part. And we want to link to a text file. So we want to go to our file, our script, which was dot dot slash dot dot site assets slash disp parent dot js. Click on test link. Yep, you can see it found it. I always do that to make sure I got the right file name. We'll go ahead and apply that and stop editing. Now, when we click on an issue, and my system goes slow, come on SharePoint. Yay, it's completely slowed. Okay, there it is. So we have our issue, need more RAM. It's ID, if we look at, if we hover over the, uh, the new item here link, let me go ahead and zoom in on this for you. So we look at the link down here and you see it's calling new item 2 and calling new item form.aspx issue ID equals 1. So the ID of our parent is 1 and we're passing that to new item form. So we're done on this page. The last step of the process is going to be go to go to the new item form of the child and have it read that issue ID from the query string and set the lookup field to that value. And that's what we'll do in the fourth and final video.